Wow, look at this poster. Doesn't this look cool? Look at all the detail in this thing. And check out this tagline. After the sun has set and the night wind has died, comes the hour of the bat people. Well, I hate to break it to you, but even just an hour of the bat people is an hour too much. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And on this episode, I'm gonna be talking about a movie that, um, honestly, I'm just gonna be blunt about it. I can't stand this thing. This is a horrible movie. I hated it. First of all, this poster is total bullshit. You'd think that a movie called The Bat People and features a bunch of bat people on the poster would have several bat people in the actual film. Wrong. So let's just jump right into this thing, shall we? I know you're all just dying to know what actually does happen in The Bat People. Well, The Bat People isn't completely devoid of any action. There's a lot of hilarious twitching and shaking done by the main character throughout this film. Now, the movie starts with a lot of footage of bats. Oh, look at this, isn't this spooky? But it turns out this is just a nightmare that John is having. Johnny. You were yelling in your sleep. Oh yeah, see now this can actually be a very serious thing. I once dated a girl who screamed in her sleep all the time. And eventually I was like, look, we got to talk to a doctor about this because it's waking me up. It's really annoying. Anyways, John and his wife Kathy are going on their honeymoon. But first, they've got to make a pit stop in the desert for a picnic and to look for cactus fruit. Something no honeymoon should be without. Suddenly, John hears something. But no time for that, Johnny. Look, a bat, and it's on our picnic blanket. Yuck. But don't worry, Kathy. John knows exactly what to do. He's a doctor who specializes in bats. So he throws a rock at it because that seems like something someone with a respect for bats would do. Anyways, Kathy is really shaken up by this whole thing and she's like, hey, can we just go straight to skiing instead of going inside those caves? Well, John, I have to say, you planned this honeymoon pretty much perfectly. Picnic in the desert, walking around in caves and skiing. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, wow, that's, that's pretty extravagant. But you gotta remember, this was back in 1974 and Pretty sure that was like a textbook romantic getaway back then. Anyways, John is like, skip the caves? Kathy, are you out of your mind? You know how important that is for my work. I want to be the best bat specialist in the world. And I'm almost there. You saw how close I got with that rock. So they go on a tour through the cave, but Kathy can't take it anymore. Turns out she's been horny this whole time and she just needs to have it. So they sneak off to go find a hard, jagged surface to have sex on, as newlyweds are known to do. Suddenly, Kathy slips and falls into a crevice, and now John is stuck in there too. Well, well, well. The tour guide told you specifically not to deviate from the group for this exact reason, but you just couldn't help yourselves and now you're stuck. So let this be a lesson to all you young people out there. Always practice safe sex. And I'm not talking about prophylactics. I'm talking about location, 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 because there are safe places to have sex and unsafe places to have sex. Locations such as a back alley, a swamp, a uh, hot air balloon basket. These would all be examples of places that are reasonably safe for sexual activity, but a cave is not. Caves are very dark. You don't know what's going on in there. Plus, you won't be able to see any of the action. That's like the best part. Suddenly, John starts hearing that strange noise again that only he can hear for some reason, and holy crap, a bat comes out of nowhere and attacks him. It's not. See, now that's what everyone says when they get bit by a bat, and then later that night, it's the same old song and dance. Oh, I don't feel so good. My head hurts. Mark, I'm worried I might have rabies. Well, maybe you should have thought of that before we passed the hospital on the way home. Now I've got to put my shoes back on, get my keys, open the garage door, and drive you to the hospital. Maybe have some consideration for other people's laziness? Yes, don't do Why? Yeah, Kathy, what the hell is wrong with you? Kicking a bat is very bad luck. That's up there with, you know, breaking ladders and walking under mirrors and, you know, that type of shit. 
Never mind. It doesn't matter. Tell me. <clears throat> you wanted to examine it for rabies. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so now, uh, well, I guess they got out of there, and they're now driving to the snowy mountains. Anyways, John starts hearing that strange sound again, and while they're on the gondola going up the mountain, he suddenly starts tripping out, having visions of bats and Kathy running and being attacked by bats. But then he wakes up and doesn't even realize anything happened. So they're like, let's just ignore it and go skiing. Nothing bad ever happens to people while they're skiing. Might as well add the chance of blacking out completely into the mix. So after going skiing for a really, really long time, they sit in a hot tub and once again, John starts convulsing and tripping out again and cuts his hand. So they go to the first aid station where the bat bite on his head gets noticed. Ah. Uh, what are we gonna do about that? That can wait. You're the doctor. Wait, so then what are you? Just the bandage guy? Never mind about the bite on my head, it's from a bat, all right? You know, bats, creatures known for carrying diseases and rabies. So it's really nothing to worry about, just leave it. The real concern here is this cut on my hand. I mean, am I ever gonna be able to grip a ski pole again? Anyways, Charlie Brown is really concerned about the bite, but Johnny isn't having any of that. Look, you two, there's a minimum 30-day incubation period, so there's no reason to spoil the weekend. Yeah. 30 day incubation period, which means nothing can happen before then. So why worry about it now? I mean, sure, I've had multiple episodes now where I've blacked out and started convulsing ever since I got bit by a strange bat in a creepy cave, but that could be from anything. That could be from this, uh, this fresh mountain air, you know? We're not used to the, uh, the altitude. Our bodies have to acclimate. Nothing is worse than rabies. Thanks a lot, doctor. Wait, so they're both doctors? Obviously not very good doctors. Hey, what's that bite on your forehead? It's nothing, just leave it alone. Okay, well, you're the doctor. But nothing's worse than rabies. Oh yeah, thanks a lot, doctor. Making me look like an idiot in front of my wife. I mean, I probably should be taking this more seriously since I work with bats for my job, but I'm trying to downplay this whole thing because it's our honeymoon. And she's not gonna wanna bang me if she thinks I have rabies, which I might. But we shouldn't worry about that now. Let's go hit the slopes. I don't think a week will make any difference. I am going skiing. Oh, don't let anything stop you, doctor. He's only a patient. Take it easy, Ken. And you're being as irresponsible as he is. You're working on a grant in preventive medicine and you won't take it yourself. You're not doctors, you're children. You ready to go, doctor? <laughs> this is just so ridiculous. Can you believe that, doctor? The old ball and Jane is concerned for my health after I got bit by an animal known for carrying rabies and I've passed out three times since then. <laughs> Broads, am I right? I'm ready, doc. Where are we going? Hospital. But seriously though, the doctors actually listen to Kathy and take Johnny to a hospital five miles down the road. They tell Kathy to wait in the waiting room while they give him the rabies shots. And it looks like everything is gonna be fine until Johnny starts bouncing around and says he can't breathe. So they give him another shot and say, oh, you were just having an allergic reaction. But they tell him to stay in the hospital so they can monitor him. Anyways, back on the ski hill, Kathy flags down Dr. Kipling and asks him about Johnny's allergic reaction because one of the nurses told her about it? Doctor, one of the nurses told me what happened. You shouldn't have done that. Okay, so this makes no sense to me at all. Like, the doctor didn't tell her what happened before they went back to the ski hill? So he tells her that Johnny's reaction to the shot can produce side effects very similar to the symptoms of rabies, but she tells him that he's been having those side effects even before he got the shot. Which, again, this seems like a conversation that probably should have happened in the hospital. And it's not that they're just back at the ski hill. Time has passed. Like, she's back in her ski gear, skiing, he's skiing. Like, this wasn't talked about before? Now, whatever you saw in him, believe me, it wasn't rabies. The incubation period is one to five months. Okay, but isn't this at least kind of concerning that he's been exhibiting all these symptoms after the bite? I mean, sure, they're the same symptoms as rabies, but 
it can't be rabies, so... I don't know. So I guess Johnny is having another nightmare about bats, and bats attacking this woman and biting her, and look, his hand is starting to transform, almost as if it's slowly turning into a wing. So he gets up and looks in the mirror, like, well, at least my face is okay. But guess what? It's time for another batgasm. And the thing is, the editing kind of sucks here. There's this nurse down the hall, but all we really see is this eyeball, and then suddenly he's in front of her. And she's so scared, she turns around and knocks over this conveniently placed tray of glass bottles in the locker room. And I guess the glass cut her throat and killed her? So the next day, a nurse finds his ring on the floor, must have fallen off when his hand turned into a wing, and he can't seem to get the ring back on his finger. How did you ever get that off? It took two strong men and a boy to get it on. Kathy, I want you to find the psychiatrist. But once in your life, just do what the hell I ask. Can't you see I'm in trouble? Dude, it's really not that big of a deal. You don't need a psychiatrist. Just get some hand soap, cover your finger in that, and it should slide right back on. Seriously though, Johnny is worried because the other nurse told him that something happened to the night nurse, so that made him go from thinking this whole thing is no big deal to, holy crap, I'm losing my mind and I might be killing people. Anyways, Johnny leaves the hospital but decides to pick up a gift for Kathy until, oh my god, it's starting up. And here comes Sergeant Ward from the Sheriff's Department. So Johnny's like, ah oh, crap, what if I start transforming again? I can't let him see my bat hand. So the sergeant is following him because of the death at the hospital and he found Johnny's hospital wristband next to the body but the weird thing is it's not broken it's completely intact so how did it slide off his wrist which is a really good question i mean it makes sense that the ring was forced off of his finger because of the webbing that was forming between his fingers but this doesn't make any sense if anything when he was transforming his hand got bigger so how would the wristband slip off anyways after not eating his dinner at all John can't sleep, so he sneaks out into the night to commit mannequin murder. Anyways, John needs this sweater. Seems like it would have been easier to just take it off of the mannequin. I mean, it's not like it's going to stop you. So John runs off with the perfect disguise and sees a young couple parked in a truck, smoking marijuana and making out. Seems like something's going to happen until suddenly the guy stops and says, Hey, it's getting late. That's right. Unfortunately, erectile dysfunction can strike anywhere at any time. It's a major problem that affects men everywhere. But luckily, there's help. So come on down to Menage a Mark's Erotic Bookmark Emporium, where we've got the widest selection of erection-inducing placeholders. Anyways, the guy decides to get out and leave. And as she goes to get out of the truck, Johnny the Man Bat attacks. But here's another thing I don't understand. Whose truck is that? I mean, you'd assume it was his because he was in the driver's seat, but he gets out and walks away. So, okay, maybe it's hers. But if it's hers, you would assume that it's parked just outside of her trailer and she'll get out and just run into her trailer. But instead, she runs all over the trailer park until Johnny finally corners her and, wait a minute, didn't we see this exact same thing before? Johnny was dreaming about it in the hospital. Anyways, Johnny wakes up, so wait, what? Was that just a recurring dream? Was he also dreaming about the sergeant finding the mannequin? Whatever, no time to make sense of any of this because this movie sucks. But wait, here comes Sergeant Ward and he wants to talk to Johnny right after he gets a good look. Can't wait till morning, Sergeant, it's 3 a.m. Uh, no. Get back to bed, Kathy. Seriously, Johnny? You're gonna talk to her like that after she's done nothing but try to help you this whole time? Well, you know what, Johnny? That's a lot of attitude coming from a guy who buttons his pajamas all the way up to the top. Well, I get chilly at night. Seriously, Kathy is the one person in this movie who has their head on straight. She was the one who convinced two doctors to look at this situation at a hospital. She's been taking care of this guy ever since. And what does she get in return? Lip from her husband and getting oogled by a cop at 3 in the morning. That, that's nice. Anyways, Sergeant Ward talks about some girl who just had her throat ripped out. So it wasn't a dream. Johnny really did sneak out in the middle of the night, commit theft, damage to property, murder, and then snuck back in all while under the influence of some kind of man-bat split personality. Which, again, he had a dream about this before it happened? This exact thing? So, 
he sees the future now? So the sergeant shows him a bandage that she ripped off the attacker, just like the bandage Johnny had on his hand from the cut. It's just too bad that this doesn't really implicate him since they forgot to put the bandage on his hand when they actually filmed the scene. Take these. They'd knock out an elephant. They'll help you with the nightmares. Okay, this guy has either got to be the funniest or most incompetent doctor of all time. Finds out this guy has a bite on his head from a bat, then doesn't tell his wife about the allergic reaction he had right after it happened, and then just throws some tranquilizers on the table like, here you go, problem solved. We don't need to look into any of this any further. I'm not sure there were nightmares. Look, uh, I'm not a psychiatrist, far from it. Really not that much of a doctor either, quite honestly. But, you know, I think that, wait, are you saying that you don't want those drugs? Because, I mean, if you don't want them, I'll take them. I guess, you know, might as well not let them go to waste because, you know, if they sit out too long, they'll go stale. So he comes up with this theory that Johnny's fever caused him to rearrange the sequence of events in his head and he never actually killed the nurse. Anyways, they decide to keep him at the hospital until the rabies treatments are done. And look, here comes Kathy with a bowl full of various fruits. Honestly, wife of the year material over here comes in with a bowl of, uh, what, what's in there? Apples, oranges, pear, well, those pears are a little green, but still, it's the gesture, you know? It's the thought that counts. No one has ever surprised me with a bowl of fruits. I, I don't know what I'm doing. No one else lives here, so <laughs> what am I expecting? Let's just move on. So Johnny is now freaking out because he thinks he's losing his mind and I'm losing my patience with this stupid movie because we're halfway through this thing and so far we've gotten a webbed hand and that's it. We were promised bat people and so far all we've gotten is a bunch of shaking, twitching. I, I wanna see some bat faces. Chop chop. So Johnny's freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. Turns out this is a shared bathroom with the room next to his, so he uses it to escape. So John crawls out of a window <laughs> and didn't walk much. And this is where he decides to add to his list of crimes by stealing an ambulance. No, Johnny, no. So he gets into a wild chase with the police until he finally flips the car. And I'm a little surprised it didn't explode, to be honest. A little surprised and very disappointed because that would have been the end of the movie. Johnny finds a barn to stay in, and for some reason there's a drunk in there. Then we have this scene with the drunk that goes on for a really long time, but here we go again. It's time to freak out and murder somebody. Still waiting on those bat people. Starting to feel like it's never going to happen. Johnny takes the old drunk guy's coat and heads to the caves where he starts hearing that weird sound again. Okay, so now you might be thinking, finally, you know, maybe there will be some bat people inside of the caves. No. Nothing like that. Anyways, Kathy is obviously really worried about Johnny, so she walks around town trying to find him until Sergeant Ward offers to give her a lift back to their motel room, where after listening to her talk about how scared and worried she is about her husband, he turns into the biggest piece of shit in the entire movie. No! All right, so really the only person you can root for at this point is Kathy. John's been nothing but an asshole. And, you know, the sergeant, you know, in the beginning, you think that's kind of a character that you can kind of root for. I mean, yes, he's trying to put John away for the murders, but really he's just doing his job up until now. Quite honestly, at this point, I just want this movie to end with Kathy going skiing and having some fun. I think she deserves it. Okay, so we're back in the cave. What's John looking for here? Well, he came all this way to have his hands transform and then he kidnaps someone and oh my god he just needed her keys so that he can take her car back into town honestly this movie is such an asshole every time it comes close to 
delivering what it promised, it's like, yeah, no, let's, let's not do that. So Johnny takes the car and sneaks back into the hospital that he escaped from. And so far, this movie has been not so much of him turning into a bat, but more of him trying on different coats. Now he's trying to find where the rabies vaccines are. Well, Johnny, maybe if you would have just stayed in the hospital where they were already giving you the shots, you wouldn't be in this situation. But remember, whenever there's a straight path forward in this movie, they like to add in a batgasm just to throw everything off track. It's really just a cheap way of writing, honestly. It's really bad storytelling. So now he's like, give me the key to the fridge with the blood in it, because you know, bats like blood. And now the sergeant gets there, but he's too late. Johnny has escaped again and goes back to the f***ing cave where he eats some rats and records his final testimony before, you guessed it, going back into town to the motel and talking to Kathy through a crack in the door where he tells her, it's too late for me, Kathy. Uh, I'm a bat now, okay? So you just gotta forget about me and move on with your life and I'm gonna uh, start living my bat life. But Kathy won't hear it. She's like, look, John, you're fine and for some reason decides, well, he can't control himself. He's obviously very sick and could have a deadly disease, but I should have sex with him. That seems like the safe bet. Anyways, during sex, John transforms into full bat mode, even though we don't get to see it. And you'll never guess what happens next. He goes back to the cave. So Sergeant Ward gets there and confronts him and we finally get to see him in full bat mode, which is, Kind of disappointing, to be honest. I mean, we've waited the whole movie for this, and it's not horrible, but it's not good either. It kind of reminds me of the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. So he beats the crap out of Sergeant Ward, and the sergeant gets out of there, but now, oh my god, Kathy is hearing the strange sound too. So I guess now she's gonna turn into a bat person. Was it worth it, Kathy? Was it worth the D? Anyways, the sergeant starts driving her back into town, but a swarm of bats start flying into the car. And I guess Kathy is now the bat queen or something? So the bats start attacking the sergeant, and he's like, well, I guess I might as well kill myself. And Kathy walks into the cave. The end. All right, so where do I even begin with this? I guess, aside from everything I already mentioned throughout the video, my biggest problem is, why did this happen to John? I mean, he got bit by a bat and started turning into a bat. Why? That's not something that happens. For the record, I'm not criticizing this for not being realistic. I'm criticizing it for the fact that there was no reason given. You know, there's nothing special about the bat, so why did it happen? For example, in Spider-Man, Peter Parker turns into Spider-Man because he got bit by a radioactive spider. Again, obviously I'm not arguing realism here. My point is that getting bitten by a spider is an ordinary thing. So for an extraordinary result, you need the spider to be extraordinary. And even if you wanted to make the argument, well, maybe the bat was magical or demonic or evil or whatever, and we never found out because Kathy kicked away the bat, well, here's the problem with that. John was hearing that strange sound before the bite even happened. And as the movie makes very clear at the end, anyone who hears that sound is gonna turn into a bat person. So John was hearing the sound before the bite, which is a major mistake in my opinion, because from a writing perspective, it completely undermines the importance of the bite. I mean, if he was hearing that sound before the bite, that means he was destined to turn into a bat person no matter what. So why even have the bite? And here's my other big problem with this movie. Throughout the story, we don't really see the stages of transformation. I mean, at one point, we see his hand turn into a bat wing or whatever, but that gets taken away. And then we don't really see anything else until the very end. John acts crazy on and off throughout the whole movie. This is constant. So there's not really 
much of a feeling of progression. I'm going to give another example, and this is one of my favorite movies. It's David Cronenberg's The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. One of the reasons I love this movie so much is that it moves, and by that I mean that it just it moves along so well and there's never really a part in the movie that I feel really drags. The film manages to keep you interested the whole time and it does that by making the main character's transformation happen at a good pace. Every time you see him since the start of the transformation there is a noticeable progression and not just visually it's in the character. But that's pretty much it for this one as usual thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all next time. What about that? There was no flesh left on my fingers. I can't get it back on now. Okay, real quick. Decision time here, Johnny. Do or die. Do you want the pills or not? Because I need to know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs>